Hello and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV with me, Mioni, continuing our look at new player guides. In this video, I want to cover the Heads Up Display, or HUD. This is an integral part of your user interface and the first thing that you see when you log into your game. It's also something that I personally neglected heavily when I first started playing the game way back in 1.0 and then in uh, via Realm Reborn Beta onwards. It's, uh, it took me a long time to actually get up the courage for some reason to open the menu and change my heads up display. So today I'm gonna show you how exactly that all works. So this is pretty much the generic heads up display. Over here we have ourselves the, uh, the different windows for uh, general chat, our battle event, and we've also got an extra one on the end there. We have our main action bars clumped in the middle here with our health and mana. Our gill is over here, our currency, our XP bar, and our job gauger here. We have extra action bars here, the buttons randomly floating here. These are inventory slots that you can see here, these little dots. All of the black dots signify that you have open space, and the colored dots include um, pieces of gear and, and things like that or housing items or whatever basically saying that they're filled and also this is your character window as well this is your quest area and this is the mini map this is your time and date your server uh, including telling you if it's your home world or not your buff bars and there's also uh, debuff bars as well up here so Basically, if you press escape or you use your controller and go to the menus, you'll be able to get access to the HUD layout. Now, this is where things get interesting. It's quite intimidating when you first click on this. Let's make this big for you. You'll see that we've got number one, two, three, and four. The default setup then here is, is this one. This is default. Number two is actually the default that you'll probably see when you first start playing the game, okay? This is how things are naturally set out for you, no matter what resolution you're in. So you've got the main storyline quest complete thing at the top left. Uh, that actually um, will tell you what your next MSQ quest is to do, and you should definitely follow that at all times. But this is pretty much the basics, okay? This is probably what you see on your screen or something similar. You'll notice then that we have these as sort of save slots, which means you can customize your UI in multiple ways depending on what you're doing at any one time. So I can switch back to, oh, I'm doing some content that requires it to be like this or vice versa. Let's stick with number two since this is the most like default. You'll notice there's cog symbols on all of these. This will actually make it so that you have, um, basically you can copy and paste your UI settings that you've set up to other slots. You can overwrite slots. So for example, if I want number one, uh, number two to be on number one, I can totally do that by just uh, selecting it and then choosing that and pressing execute and I'll overwrite. So it's as simple as that, nice and easy. That's here, uh, you can basically, uh, your system and hotbar HUD, your system one, hot bars, or just duty. So you can limit this then. If you click on basic, it basically allows you to customize everything. If you click on system, this is only system related stuff. Notice how I can no longer alternate uh, the the, uh, the heads up display for our action bars here, our hot bars. And uh, hot bars specifically as their own and duty stuff. So this is only to do with duty actions and a, a duty gauge which you'll find in some duties later on in the game where you have to have a duty action on your screen and you, you have to click something as fast as possible. You'll get to that in the future. But I don't want to spoil where that pops up. So let's stick with basic then. And you'll notice then that we have current UI element. That means that the one that we're highlighting, if you click a different part of the screen, you'll see it changes to so hotbar three, duty list. Basically you can click anything and this area will change. You can also just scroll down, find something you want to change, and then click it that way. So here's a few things then. Let's make this a bit smaller so that we can see what we're doing. We'll put that 100% there. Let's start then with our hotbars. I think that's the, the more important part. You'll notice this is the cross hotbar. Now this is something that uh, if you're a controller player, you'll be more familiar with. At the current situation, since I'm in PC mode, this doesn't really have any benefit. So we're gonna move this over here just for a second. Our hotbars here. So here's a few things you can do. You can right click on them to make them disappear. 
This will actually make them permanently disappear in terms of uh, visuals. So we can press save here. But those buttons are still technically there. So if you wanted to have a completely, uh, a really sexy UI actually, let's just hide hotbar 2 as well. You could have your spells, if you've memorized where they are, not visible on the screen. That's not a really very advisable, advisable thing in my opinion to do. But if you're going for that super, you know, super clean HUD and you turn off all of those elements, you can get away with just a, a near cinematic experience all the way through. But of course, not everybody knows where all of their stuff is. And it's practically, you know, it, it's impractical for the purpose of playing the game normally. You need to see cooldowns and things. You, unless you have like, you know, incredible timing in your head, you're not going to be able to see how long you've got on a Divine Benison or a Benediction or your Thin Air or whatever it is that your class has access to. Other things that you can do, hold control and right click. That also does the same thing. But you can also highlight something and then go into this cog setting here, UI element settings. If you go in here, you get this uh, element settings menu. You've got element transparency. So if you want to, you can have your uh, your abilities well less visible the further you go down there. So say for instance, you just want a hint of them or if you want them full opacity, then you put that on zero. You can change the, the layout of these bars. So say for instance, you don't like you know, essentially what is 12 buttons in a row. We can change that to six by two, to four by three, to three by four, two by six, and then one by 12, which is obviously a vertical rather than horizontal method. Some people prefer this. Me personally, I actually quite like um, a co combination of six by two. I think that's quite an ple uh, appeasing thing. So we're gonna go with that, me personally. I'm just gonna move that down. You'll notice that the, the UI menu actually has grids on it. The reason for these grids is so that you can actually align them better, so that you can uh, see with your naked eye if something is lined up properly or not. Let's do the same with hotbar 2 then. So we simply highlight it, we click on the cog, and then we can go in here. So 4B3 is what I want here. And uh, you can also change the size of that element as well. So it's currently at 100%, but we can make that up to 200%. That's how big you can physically make icons in this game. That There is no bigger option than this. This is 100%. This is basically 200%. This is your the maximum size, as you can see. So you can't get bigger than that. Um, let's change that back down to 100. There we go. And we'll put that on uh, 6x2. Boop, boop. Like this. And I quit out the menu. But you'll notice... They were already starting to get quite a nice little uh, idea going. This is the sort of hotbar setup I would have. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfectly lined up because uh, I just don't have the time in this video, right? But perfection is going to make you happier in the long run, uh, I think. So we can do the same with our health bars. Maybe our health bars are too small. We can drag these around however we want, by the way. We can put these anywhere. We can put them in the middle of the screen. We can also click a cog button, change this to 200%. Oh, maybe I have trouble seeing how much health and, and mana I have. There you go, that problem is now gone, right? Me personally, however, <laughs> I don't necessarily need to see my own health uh, that clearly. So I'm gonna make that um, probably not 60%, but like 90% is always nice. I'm gonna plop that um, underneath one of these bars, I think. Let's see, uh, maybe 80%. There we go. That looks a little bit nicer for me personally. Our experience bar. This is something that once you hit maximum level, you want to just completely delete simply by control right click. There you go. Done. Because you're not going to be using that. Uh, for some people, they like to make this enormous so they know exactly where they are and how many increments of experience they've gained. That's perfectly normal to see that at the bottom of the screen. Me personally, I, if I do have this on, I like to have it as small as possible out of the way. Uh, so we're gonna put this underneath, you guessed it, our other hotbar there, like that. 
so that way we've got something under both. We're also going to make movies a little bit lower on the screen if we were to do, you know, for example, we would put them probably down here. I like to have as much of my character visible as possible in the long run. I think that that's um, actually really beneficial for content, personally. Just, oh, that's rough, but it'll do. So there we go, that's what we've got so far. Then we've got a job gauge. Every uh, job in the game has a job gauge. The job gauge, as you can see up here, is here. Now this is basically for our white mage, because we're on white mage, it's for our lilies. Now, some job gauges are more important than others. I would say that the lilies are important, but honestly, I don't think I would ever need them to be the size of half of my character. In fact, the, <laughs> it's nearly as big as my character, isn't it, on this Lalafell? So what we're going to do is we're going to make that nice and small. Shrink that bad boy down to about yeah 80%, something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. I'm going to pop that in the middle of my abilities. So that way I'm filling up my abilities and it fills up there. I My recommendation to you is to leave space to see underneath your character's feet. This game, like many has a ton of AoEs that stack on top of each other. And if you basically put your HUD items, I don't know, let's this give you an example. Let's put like hot bar three right here. Right. I've seen some people do this. Now this is obviously each to their own, but me personally, the more stuff I stack on top of my character, well A the less appealing it is to me if I want to take any screenshots without turning off the HUD but also it's just really cluttered isn't it I, I just don't like that at all that's already giving me horrible thoughts looking at that so let's, let's get rid of <laughs> let's get rid of that straight away I always like to have extra hot bars some people do not um, personally one of my favourite things to do with hot bars is to stack them like Jenga if that makes sense. So even if we had this hot bar on like this, we would have, you know, I usually play it as a zoomed sort of situation like that anyway. But as you can see, we've got plenty of room beneath our feet. We've got a nice little bridge of abilities. And we also have uh, our, just everything in a nice place. Some people like the mini map to be closer to them. We can drag that down. We could replace the healing gauge with the mini map, for example. This is very simple to do. Some people like to have the minimap enormous because that's just how they're used to it in other games, perhaps. Maybe they're just a little bit less sighted, let's say, hard of, hard of uh, vision. This is a perfect way of making that bigger so that I know exactly where I'm going, for example. And some people don't like to look up at the corner of their screen. So we can, we can easily make this a lot smaller as well. Let's put that down to, you know, this size I personally would never make it this size though if it was me simply based on the fact that that is way too small now is another little tip if you want to zoom in and out of your minimap highlight over the minimap and do your scroll wheel you can scroll wheel in and you can scroll wheel out you can also click on these plus and minus if you can even see that at this size but yeah that's what you can do for zooming in and out. Personally, I don't like that. I, I think that's annoying. But, um, you know, let's say if we had that at like 90, uh, yeah, I think 100% is probably where I usually would have it anyway. <clears throat> we could place that in like the corner. So we've got stuff like the main menu. What's this? The inventory stuff. Uh, notices. Our gill notices. All right, okay, move across hotbar for a bit. We don't need that necessarily because I'm not going to be using it. Let's put the mini map. Let's make the mini map nice and big just because we can and put that in the corner. There we go. And then, I don't know, inventory grid. Do we really need to see that? Nah, not really. I don't like seeing the inventory grid. We'll turn that off. The main menu itself is something I personally use. There are shortcuts for every menu. But this is what I normally would click on. I'm a big filthy clicker when it comes to um, actually going through my menus. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie at that point. So what I'm gonna do is make this, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe 120. Plop that on there, like that. Or maybe in the middle there. 
We can also change this as well um, in terms of transparency, but honestly, that's that's fine. Say, for instance, you have more abilities than this. Take one of these hot bars that are turned off. You can tell they're turned off because they're purple at the moment. Change that by right clicking on them to white. Press the save button that will show up as buttons now. Now we have ourselves a bar. This I would like to usually place at a corner or the sides of my screen. But what we're going to do is we're going to put down another bar. Uh, this time we're going to do some 4 by 3s I'm going to put these stacked next to the mini map like that. And then we'll get another one. And we'll resize that as well. Another 4 by 3 at 100%. And... There you go, that should be in the right place. That way we've got spaces to put buttons uh, if we want to. Personally, I like to have things like cooldown timers. Another tip for people, say for instance you are playing, I don't know, White Mage or uh, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you're playing, what you can do is you can essentially uh, create a timer bar, right? So this is something that basically involves you just bringing another duplicate of that ability onto the screen, right? So we can make this 200%, put the things that you're most interested in on this bar, and then it will track them, right? So even when you're using them. There is a way of hiding these buttons as well, if I remember correctly. Let me see if I can find that. Uh -huh. This is going to be interesting, actually because I'm not sure I remember. But in the character configuration, if you go to HUD, you'll see lots of really interesting stuff. Uh, you can turn off the EXP bar in here. You can display an inventory grid on and off, which is what we saw earlier. We can display the duty list if we want to. I don't know why you would ever want to turn that off. And you've also got uh, the ability to hide lists during um, things like that, uh, duties and things like that. You can switch between your clock type. Let's see, where is it? I'm trying to find where this would be. I cannot necessarily remember, but there is a way of essentially making it so that the buttons disappear. Just two seconds. There we go, hide unassigned slots. It was right in front of my face. So now, those slots are still there, right? So as you can see, we still have slots here. If we go to the HUD menu, like the slots are still there, but we can then move this button wherever we want. So if we want to have a tracker for certain abilities, we can totally do that, right? Personally, I use this for cooldowns specifically. Some other people use it the same way. So what you do is you make it like a, a stack of things you want to keep a memory of, and then you put a second of that ability on the screen. So let's say we want, uh, I don't know, Divine Benison CD, our benediction CD, and then I don't know when are we? When's our next temperance? Let's um, temporarily put that there, and then we can make another bar for this. Uh, in fact, we've got one, haven't we? Let's use this bar. Might as well since it's here. Make this a bit bigger. Boop boop boop. We'll plop that. Just it lets me. We'll plop that there. Obviously not the most precise thing in the universe. Uh, we un untick this padlock. As soon as you untick the padlock, you can now drag and drop things on your bars, by the way. When you click and drag, you'll actually see the buttons. So we can put that there, for example. And that way, say for instance, we're going through the game and we use our venison. There you go, there's the 30 second timer listed up here. If you can't see the button, you know, we'll do this. We could probably have a size on there as well. There's our temperance. So it starts counting down. Nice big chunky button that we can physically see. And oh no, this person needs heal. There you go, there's a benediction. It's all tracked. That's how people usually do tracking of, of buffs and debuffs. Because there is no built-in functionality separate than this for them. Now this is already starting to annoy me in terms of my OCD. So we're going to turn those off. But um, another thing then, let's let's go through this. So here's our gill. Let's make this biggest, uh, bigger for the purpose of the actual video. Let's just plop that there. So something with the gill, 
I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually click this to bring up your currency tab. You can right click this to change what currency is actually displayed. So we just swap to our grand company seals. We click again. There's our MGP. Click again and there's our gill. So we've got gill, company seals, MGP. And that's something that not many people know, honestly. So if you don't want to see a gill, but maybe you want to track MGP, what's the make it rain events on, well, there you go. Or we can just completely get rid of it, which is something that I usually do. Same with quests as well. Maybe the quest text is just annoyingly small. We can change the size of that. Although 200% is a little bit overkill, I can see some people finding that useful. Personally, when it comes to duty list, that goes down to a minimal. So that when it does end up stacking up multiple quests, it doesn't take up a bajillion of my HUD. And I also like to have this close to um, the bottom as well. Usually I would put it probably somewhere like here, I think. Yeah, something like that. Just, oh, maybe not like that, but... You know what I mean? As far far out of the way as possible, so I know what's happening in the quest lines, but at the same time, it's not a big deal. In fact, we'll probably do it in line with the minimap so it can stack downwards. And there we go. We've customized the UI. Another thing you can do is if you click on where it says local time, you can rotate that to server time, to Eorzea time, and then back to local time. We can also change this as well. So let's change the size of this. You know, make that 200% so that we can see exactly what time it is. I think that's sometimes one of the most important things because you lose track of the time in the game. Another thing you do, let's go escape, go to character configuration, and let's go to our UI settings. You can see on here, there's the EXP bar and stuff. If you tick Eorzea time as well as server time, so it's not just one ticked, we can press apply and then we have access to all of those times without having to click through th through anything. So if you're like me and you like to see exactly what yields your time, local time and server time, you don't have to click on anything. You just want it nice and big in the top corner for you to see. That's how you would do that. Um, in terms of status info, these are usually buffs. So at the minute we've got FC buffs on. I like to make my buffs more visible for me personally because um, honestly when it comes down to it they are quite detrimental to to how I see um, the game so we, we sort of, they've also got um, status enfeeblements on this as well so we can make those a bit bigger there we go and um, others are 100% okay there we go. So this is the enfeeblement section over here. Uh, well, as you can see here, this is enfeeblement. So these are your debuffs. These are your, let's move this. This is your your uh, your status buffs. And these are like other kinds of buffs. Okay, this is the status info of other. So we can change this as well. Where is other? There it is on the bottom. So now we've made our buff bars absolutely enormous. We can place these though right so i don't know and let's say we end up with i don't think we'll end up with more than two of those types of buff but there we go some people like to have their buffs either side of their character as well that's a, a perfectly reasonable place me i like to have my buffs and debuffs at the top of the screen in a row because that's what i was used to for final fantasy 14 and um in the past and also world of warcraft i used to do the same thing but they're much bigger now, suiting uh, how I play. But uh, also the scenario guide, we can just right click on that to get rid of it if we don't want it. I personally can't stand seeing the scenario guide every five seconds. And there we go, we've got a very custom UI at the moment. This is just the very basics. So you can do a lot of stuff in these menus with pop-up text. We can change the amount of duties that are displayed. We can change um, there's the main scenario guide, by the way, if you wanted to find a tick box for that. Uh, you can also tick it so that it hides when all quests are complete. This is something that um, I would recommend more than just turning it off like this. I would recommend having it on 
and ticking this. That way it automatically hides when there's no new MSQ quest for you to do. So when the expansion comes out or a new patch, this will pop back up again naturally. Uh, another thing is percentages are quite useful to have displayed as a target. Um, some people prefer to have like a, a percentage of how much this person's health has left rather than an actual number. Me personally, I, I like having the percentages turned on. There's all sorts of bits and pieces like this. You've got your party list here, and that's before even going into the fact that you can change where alliance lists are, right? So your party list is here. This is where your party members will be displayed. If you're a healer, I like to have my party list as close to me as possible, right? so that I can actually target someone to heal them if they're in my party. So I always bring the party list close. In terms of the alliance list, this is the sort of stuff you can only really change once you're inside something that has an alliance. But more often than not, I will put this up here. Uh, it's not my direct um, role as a healer to heal these particular other alliance lists, but if their healers do die and they've got no one to res or they do need help, I will reach and click them from here uh, and click heal them but some people like to have them much closer to their character as well so that they can access them more quickly which is fine as well but yeah you can pretty much move most of this stuff around here uh, I like to make sure that we've got our bars next to us so this is our focus target bar um, basically what we have is our progress bar here this is when you click on something for a quest or whatever I like to have that to the left there and um, let's let's see where this is there it is there's the uh, let's put a limit gauge down there so we've got a limit gauge at the bottom that will fill up when we're in a duty and we've got our focus target there as well but you'll notice that um, where is it where is the where is the cast bar? Ah, there it is. It's up there for some reason. I, c I couldn't see it for a second. Let's uh, let's use my Kate Sif or Catchy as a uh, demonstration here. Yeah, so the target bar is up here. I don't like having the target bar. Whoopsie. There we go. Let's uh, let's put that back roughly. Never mind. It doesn't matter. It's it's rough right now. Uh, let's put the target bar to the left of my character. I don't like how big this is sometimes, but um, yeah. I like to have my, my target close to me and my focus target close to me near my party list. That way I can see if my target is casting something. Usually I target like um, the tanks or whatever or people I'm healing obviously, but we also have focus target. Usually my focus target that I set is uh, either a tank that I'm healing, if it's like tank buster so I know exactly what they're at without glancing away too quickly or I set this uh, focus target, which is more often than not, to the actual boss itself. Mostly because there are interruptibles on bosses that show up as like interruptible wavy uh, cast bars, stuff like that. That's much easier for me to see and it will be easier for you as well as a, uh, a melee, for example, or a tank having those closer to you. Visibility of both your party and your actual boss or targets you're attacking is incredibly important. There's no point having your focus target bar and your target bar on the top of your screen if you're not looking up there. You know, not everybody looks up at the top of their screen during a, a boss fight or during a fight. It can be quite annoying to do so, especially if you've got a large monitor. So, you know, you, you look wherever is natural on the screen, which is even near your party frames if you're a healer, so down low, or near the thing you're actually attacking, which is, again, sort of center of the screen or lower, lower end of that center of the screen, as simple as that. But this is pretty much what we basically covered today. There's, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten too much. Uh, there are a couple of things here. There's gamepad mode as well. If you didn't know about this as well, your PlayStation 4 and 5, as well as your PC, uh, can be like on PC you can plug in a controller and switch between that this is where that cross hot bar comes in by the way that we moved earlier we can drop this into the middle of the screen roughly yeah there you go and you can customize that how you would normally do dragging and dropping onto that bar um, or you could use obviously with your controller but you can also switch back to PC and you can actually use this button on both the PS4 and PS5 as well as the PC. So technically, if you plug in a cheap USB keyboard and mouse into your PS4 and PS5, you can play it as if you were playing on PC. 
uh, if you would rather. So essentially your PlayStation is just a PC at the end of the day and your PC is essentially a console as well as a PC. They are probably some of the most diverse UI options I've ever seen in an MMORPG and the switch between is incredible. You can tell that Final Fantasy XIV and Square Enix put a lot of effort, time and money of course into refining all this. Just a final little tip at the end of this then, before we wrap off, to hide the UI completely, you press scroll lock. That's the button you press uh, to hide everything. And that way you can take some pictures or you can just walk around with nothing hidden and you just press scroll lock again to turn it back on. But there we go. Hopefully that was an interesting video. Thank you so much for watching this. I know these videos are kind of long in length. I did listen to feedback that was given to me both on the live stream and of course on the videos. Uh, people didn't really mind the longer videos as long as they had content and context, which is something I'm trying to deliver as much as possible. I don't think we can really do a short video on something like the HUD. Um, without missing everything. I'm sure I've missed plenty in this, so feel free to leave suggestions for new players who are watching this video in the comment section of things I might have not talked about. But for stuff like action bars and the changing between uh, gear sets, we'll be looking at that in further detail, so don't bother with that. We'll, we'll look at that properly in the future. But much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully this was useful to at least one person, and I'll see you all next time. Now I'm going to go and mess around on my Lalafell for a bit. Yay!